65 years ago, Matthew and Kay Buxbaum came to Aspen for the first time. Over the years, their love affair with Aspen grew. Becoming active members of the community, they became involved with many Aspen organizations. As a result, they chose to give back to the community that had given them so much joy throughout the years. And their contributions, most notably to the Aspen Music Festival and school, will be felt for many years to come. Kay Buxbaum was born and raised in Des Moines, Iowa. Growing up, she was exposed to music and art at home and at school. She studied at Grinnell College, where she was an editor of the college newspaper, the first woman to win the job. After graduation, she bicycled through Europe and then worked as a public radio producer. Matthew Buxbaum was born in Marshalltown, Iowa, raised modestly by immigrant parents. Kay says he grew up on the mother's milk of Midwestern kindness and natural courtesy. After serving in the Army Air Force in the South Pacific during World War II, he went to University of Iowa, where he graduated cum laude with a degree in economics. After college, Matthew began working in his family's grocery business. Matthew and Kay met on a blind date in 1951 and were married 10 months later. The minute I laid eyes on him when he was at the front door, I thought, this is a nice guy. <laughs> in the summer of 1953, Matthew and Kay visited Aspen to celebrate their first wedding anniversary. We came out to visit my aunt that lived in Grand Junction, and my aunt and my mother had been to a concert, and my mother had come home and said, you two kids have got to go to Aspen. And so we did. There was a Danish restaurant. That first trip here, we were having lunch there. And then we noticed we were hearing music pouring out of open windows around there. And that was music students practicing. And we thought, oh, this is heaven. They attended two concerts at the music tent while in Aspen. My husband, I didn't know it at the time, heard the first two concerts he had ever heard in his life uh, on that trip. On the same visit, the couple took a summer chairlift ride to the top of Aspen Mountain, and Kay knew she wanted to learn to ski in Aspen. I loved it, and I said, we've got to start skiing, and I want to do it right here. We went skiing, and it was just like I thought it would be. I adored it from the start. For five winters, they rented a house before deciding to build their own in downtown Aspen. Daughter Anne was born in 1954, followed by son John in 1956. They enjoyed ski vacations as a family. Spending more time in Aspen, they hoped for a larger home. They bought 16 acres of property on Willoughby Way and built a new home, which became the center of three generations of Bucksbaum lives. Over the years, Matthew and Kay became more involved with Aspen and the Aspen Music Festival and made many friends there. So we had season tickets for the concerts and went as much as we could. And one thing simply led to another. Matthew first served on the Aspen Music Festival and school board in 1985. He later became chairman, serving two separate terms from 1999 to 2002 and again from 2005 to 2006. During Matthew's tenure, the current Benedict Music Tent was built. On days when it rained, you'd be sitting in the tent and all the umbrellas would come up. And so that was a very good reason for needing a new tent. And the other was the musicians on the stage said they couldn't hear each other play. That was one of the things they very much hoped would be corrected by building a new tent. In 1997, at the suggestion of Robert Harth, then president of the Aspen Music Festival, the Bucksbombs funded an endowment that supported the New Horizons program that provides scholarships to 30 exceptional music students to attend the music school for three summers. One of the early dramatic things that they did was the New Horizons Scholarship Fund, which was the largest gift that the music festival had ever had at that time. So it was an investment in a student it wasn't, we'll take care of you this year and good luck next year. It was a three-year commitment. And it was also allowing the faculty to choose what student they thought was 
would benefit the most from this. So that began to make a significant cohort of um, particularly promising music students, who, many of whom wouldn't have been able to come otherwise. When Alan Fletcher became president of the Aspen Music Festival in 2006, he noted the serious condition of the music school campus buildings on Castle Creek Road. He called on the Bucks Bombs, proposing an entire campus of new buildings that would serve the music school in the summer. And he had as well put together a presentation of what he would like to see as a new campus as any presentation Matthew and I had ever had. And of course then there came a bottom line for it. And it was quite audacious. <laughs> And we thought, oh, should we do that? You know, is that what it would take? But as we talked about it, we decided, yes. The meetings I had with them were so inspiring. Their commitment uh, to the success of this organization in Aspen, the success of Aspen, the success of what Aspen means for people uh, was so complete. And uh, needless to say, Matthew and Kay were right there, uh, laying the cornerstone for the whole project. We needed someone or some people to step up and make a lead gift. And it was the Bucksbaums who provided the $25 million gift, which assured that this was going to be a successful capital campaign. Phase one of the beautiful new Matthew and Carolyn Bucksbaum campus was completed in 2014. Sadly, Matthew did not live to see it. Matthew had a very generous nature. And um, so when friends we had made tapped him for a gift, he would never say no. <laughs> Kay also served on the music festival board and as board chair from 2010 to 2012. Matthew Buxbaum was a chair of our board twice, uh, both at really important times and accomplished a lot. And then again, at a very important time in the history of the organization, um, we reached out to Kay and she agreed to become our chair and uh, led us uh, in uh, a way that really only she could have done. I think everyone on the board would agree uh, that we needed Kay at that moment and she really came through for us. Many other Aspen organizations have benefited from the Bucks Bombs participation and support. They were involved with the Aspen Institute as fellows. The Aspen Center for Environmental Studies was, in Matthew's eyes, one of the gems of Aspen. And he was an early supporter of ACE's purchase of the Rock Bottom Ranch near Basalt. They have also been enthusiastic supporters of Anderson Ranch, and Kay now supports high school students with Anderson Ranch scholarships each year. In 2007, Anderson Ranch awarded the Bucks Bombs its Service to the Arts Award. The Bucks Bombs have also been longtime supporters of Aspen Santa Fe Ballet. Aspen Historical Society, and Aspen Valley Hospital Foundation. For over 65 years, the Buxbaum family has enjoyed a love affair with Aspen, and their love for their adopted home has tremendously benefited Aspen, Snowmass, and the Roaring Fork Valley. One thing led to another here. We got very involved, and it was always extremely rewarding to us. There's a, a very beautiful phrase in Hebrew that I hope I pronounced correctly, at tzedakah, and um, it is about giving back to community. It's about being part of community. Uh, it's about a sense um, of creation uh, in, in terms of giving. And Matthew and Kay Buxbaum are just the embodiment of that phrase. Uh, it's in everything they do, uh, everywhere they have lived. They've been uh, important in their communities. And it's something that one can do at any level, uh, with any level of giving. Matthew and Kay have been very fortunate in their lives and they have made a lot of other people very fortunate. If you're in Aspen in the summer, you cannot avoid seeing Bucksbaum Campus, Bucksbaum Campus. It lights up the front of raft buses, which are constantly going around town. And it's such a wonderful reminder of their generosity as it should be.